Hi, I'm Joe Imartino. I'm the CTO for Marmon's Industrial Energy and Infrastructure Group. I'm located in East Granby, Connecticut. Uh, we recently presented at the June 13th, 2023 EVS 36 show in Sacramento, California. And we were talking about Marmon's forced air-cooled EV charging cable system. So we're going to present that today. With me is Therese Stevens, a product development engineer. Let's go back in history a little bit with Marmon Electrical Roots. Charles Goodyear developed the vulcanized rubber process in 1839 in Connecticut. And his cousin and partner was Julius Day, who financed him. By 1860, there were more than 60,000 people employed in America making rubber products. And worldwide, there were many applications found, especially for tires and cable. Day's son, Austin Goodyear Day, built his rubber insulated cable factory in Seymour, Connecticut. And this was to service the telegraph, electrical, and rail businesses. And that factory is today still making Marmon rubber cables. What I'm going to do now is explain how that happened and what really emerged from Austin Goodyear Day's work is the very first cross-head extruder for insulating wire in 1865, and we still have that extruder. In 1867, there were two gold medals for Samuel Morse's underwater rubber insulated telegraph wire. And this was really the first commercial use of rubber electrical wires that was using the rubber from what is now the Marmon factory in Seymour, Connecticut. By 1897, New York had a fleet of electric taxis that were using the rubber insulated cables. It was not only in the United States that we had electric vehicles, but Britain, France, Germany, and others had many electric vehicles in use before 1900. So electric vehicle is not a new technology. It's been around for a long time. It's just emerging in a different light and it's going to revolutionize the world as it never has done before in its 130 years of existence. So I'm going to turn it over now to Therese Stevens to continue the presentation. Hello, I'm Therese Stevens, Product Development Engineer, and now I'm going to talk about our Marmon Force Air-Cooled System. We have a patent-pending design for the cable and the system in order to cool the power conductors with the forced chilled air. We're using a high temperature silicone rubber for the power conductors and the jacket in order to sustain temperatures that are required for this application. As you can see, this rendering of our cable, we have channels that are going through the insulation of those power conductors that we're sending that chilled air. We have two major benefits of the Marmon Force air cooled system. Benefit number one, we can cool the cable and the contacts with our chilled air under pressure. In addition to that, we can easily swap out the force air cool cable assembly with our standard pneumatic quick connect fittings. Benefit number two, by utilizing the cooling air channels, we can keep the cable weight down and air doesn't weigh very much. So we'll continue to keep the cable very light and flexible. We wanna show you some results from our two recent proof of concept trials one being from November, 2022, and the other from May, 2023. Here you see our demonstration of proof of concept number one. We'll go along each component of our system that is attached to our Marmon air-cooled cable, but we wanted to highlight several pieces here where we've done our first testing with the Rima inlet and Rima charging handle. So first we have our air compressor system that's going to feed into our Copeland supercooler, which is chilling the air and sending that air through the cable. We were able to work with NHR to have our test equipment that's acting as the power supply and our battery emulator for high voltage charging and vehicle battery. This testing was done at our partner's location, Copeland, which was Emerson at the time at their transportation lab in Sydney, Ohio. And again, we did this testing in, in November of 2022. 
So here we just have a graphical demonstration of what we've seen. Uh, we want to be able to visualize the entire system with the dimensional constraints of, of each component. So we have the supercooler air compressor again feeding into the, the cable and that, that cable is attached to our, our test units of power supply and battery. So throughout our testing, we want to be able to collect data. We understand that this temperature along the length of the cable is critical to the end consumer. As we're sending current through the cable, we have to keep the cable cool to touch. So we are measuring different points along the length of the cable, as well as on the connector handle itself. With our forced air cooled system, we are venting the air out of the connector handle with this design. So we are measuring the temperature of the air coming out of that connector, as well as on the inside of the connector in those pins. For a proof of concept number one and number two, we did use a CCS1 charging connector. This example here, we've utilized a partnership with Rima in order to develop this prototype connector. So here we want to show a example of our air compressor system. The air compressor system is made up of four major components. We have a scroll compressor, which is pressurizing the air and sending the air into a storage tank. So then the storage tank is component number two. Then we take that air that's in the tank that's being stored. And when we're ready to use it, it goes through a refrigerated air dryer, bringing that temperature down. Then the air is being sent through a, a desiccant dryer. On the desiccant dryer, we have multiple filters included in order to remove hydrocarbons particular. That's in order to send very clean, very dry air to our supercooler. We imagine that we could utilize multiple air compressors for a number of, of charging handles, which we'll get into in a little bit. So our next component is the Copeland supercooler. This is an example of what you might see in a, a Coca-Cola vending machine that would be under the machine keeping the beverages cool. This is taking the pressurized air and taking it and, and chilling it down so we can send it through our power conductors. We have to split our air into two because of course we have two power conductors that we need to chill. And so this is taking the air and our testing down to 10 to zero degrees Celsius. The next component is the Marmon air couplers. So we need to take the air from the supercooler and send it through the power conductor cables. In order to do that, we have developed these air couplers to force that air in the direction that we want it to go. We want this system to be quick to install for the site manufacturers, and we want it to be easy to use. So we have developed these air couplers with the glands that are easy to install and tighten onto the system. And we want to make sure that we're not losing any air. Um, this would not be any environmental concern, but we want to make sure that all of that air that we're pressurizing and that we're chilling is, is doing its function and getting through the cable. So we've created these cable glands that will create a good seal. Next is our Marmon cable. So here we have an image of the actual cable itself. You can see those air channels or the arches as another term that we use to describe this cable design. So again, the cable is receiving the air from those air couplers being directed into the cable and we're sending that chilled air through the cable to, to keep the cable cool. We utilize the high temperature cross-link rubber for this design so it will be very robust and be able to handle the temperatures, the pressure that this cable will have to withstand. We have done testing so far, 375 to 400 amps with several different cable lengths and multiple connector handles. And we are also in development of other cable designs for this forced air cooled system and not just this arch design approach that's being under evaluation. At the moment, we have decided to vent that air out the connector handle. Um, and so one image here, you're seeing an example that was developed by one of our partners, Simbon, and they have taken holes at the bottom and the sides of the connector to get that vented air out of the connector at that point. So this would be the point at which the connector is being plugged into the electric vehicle. And then during the charge cycle, the vented air would, would be coming out of this handle here. Again, in other designs, we may consider that it would not be vented at the handle. But again, 
proof of concept one and two was done with, with these designs in mind. I want to talk a couple of points about our, our proof of concept two takeaways. We did this testing in May 11th, 2023. We performed this test in our East Granby, Connecticut facility. We were able to test three different connector manufacturers with our, our Marmon cable that you saw. We were able to successfully achieve testing with all three connector manufacturers at several different lengths, but 375 amps and 400 amps for those test results. And by successful, we mean that we were able to keep the cable at a safe operating temperature as dictated by the customer. And we really appreciate all the support from the connector companies that we worked with, Rima, Amphenol, PCD, and Synbon. We wouldn't have been able to get these results without their support. So we've collected a, a lot of data, but here we just wanted to show one quick snapshot of one of the, the tests we were able to capture. So for this data, we were able to measure the Synbon assembly. We did the test at 375 amps. We wanted to make sure that the hottest cable temperature was kept below the 60 C point, which we discussed that that was the safe operating temperature. And we have pointed out that our hottest cable temperature didn't reach more than 53 C during a roughly 32 minute test. This was Proof of concept two results. We want to continue our development with proof of concept three, four, and et cetera. And we are interested in working with EV charger manufacturers, EV connector companies, in order to continue to develop this patent pending solution. Getting ready for proof of concept 2B and proof of concept three. As previously discussed, we used the NHR test equipment for proof of concept one, but we have worked with Keysight in order to provide us with a low voltage battery solution for our test equipment for proof of concept two and three. So we worked with them to obtain two of those. And then in July of 2023, we will be performing proof of concept 2B with emphasis on the internal pin temperature. So we're going to be collecting the pin inside the connector handle as well as the inlet temperatures in addition to all of the temperatures that we've collected so far. That will be done with the assemblies that we have now. And then moving into proof of concept 3, we need to continue development with our connector manufacturers in order to mitigate the noise and the IP rating at the connector handle itself. Once we complete the contact temperature, we'll feed that data back to our connector manufacturers to continue the development on the connector end. As we see this new technology emerging, we envision that this force air cool will work best with a fleet configuration. So we're looking at utilizing a redundant system with a centralized cooling. How we see this happening is utilizing two of the air compressor systems that we talked about before that can feed up to two different load banks of charging handles. And so we envision that we'll have eight charging handles on one side and then another eight on the other side where we'll have the air compressors each feeding one side. If one goes down, then it can feed up to 16 altogether. Marmon Force Air Cool is in the early stages of development. So we are open to comments and questions from partners. We understand that we have many design challenges ahead of us, including the connector design, whether it be the CCS1, NAX, megawatt, or et cetera. We know that we have to reduce that noise to a safe operating level, as well as we're gonna to continue to optimize the cable design itself by keeping those cooled power lines. We would like for others to examine our research as we plan for our additional proof of concept testing and our full commercialization plans. Please contact me at any time. My email is below.